With China emerging as a new global superpower that could compete with the US, it may come as a surprise that the CCP have decided to pick a political fight with... Lithuania. Really? Well, we're going to be having a look at the ongoing and unlikely spat between Lithuania and China over Lithuania's decision to set up a Taiwanese representative office in Vilnius, and how China's somewhat heavy-handed response might have backfired. If you like explainers like this, which dive into the details and drama of EU politics and news, then be sure to subscribe. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram for even shorter explainers, so you can stay informed while you scroll. We really appreciate your support. So, to understand this story, you need to start with a bit of context. Recently, Eastern European countries have been increasingly cozying up to Taiwan and shunning China. Over the pandemic, the Czech Republic, Poland and Slovakia donated COVID-19 vaccines to Taiwan and were the only EU countries to do so. In October, Taiwan's National Development Council launched an investment tour of the Czech Republic, Lithuania and Slovakia, emphasising the scope for participation in high-tech industries such as 5G and semiconductors, in which Taiwan is a world leader, and in December, representatives from Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania gathered in Taiwan for the Open Parliament Forum. This is for a variety of reasons. China's alleged interference in Czech politics in 2017 and China's willingness to sell arms to a belligerent Belarus probably haven't helped. But there's plausibly a historical element to it all as well. This is just a theory, but governments in many Eastern European countries trace their roots back to the anti-Soviet movements of the 1980s. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Slovakia are all led by centrist or centre-right coalitions that are increasingly hawkish on China, and today's more domineering China might be bringing back not-so-fond memories of the old Soviet Union. Anyway, tensions hit a new high on July the 1st, when Lithuania announced that it would be opening a representative office in Taipei, the capital of Taiwan. A month earlier, Lithuania announced it would be pulling out of the 17 plus 1 initiative, a Chinese initiative to engage Central and Eastern European countries. Lithuania also invited Taiwan to set up an equivalent office in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, under the name Taiwan. For context, to avoid violating Beijing's One China principle, most governments require Taiwanese entities to operate under the name Chinese Taipei. This doesn't quite amount to Lithuania formally recognising Taiwan as a state, but it nonetheless annoyed China, who responded on August the 10th by recalling their ambassador to Lithuania and ordering Lithuania's ambassador to China to leave Beijing. On December the 15th, Lithuania duly obliged, withdrawing all its diplomats and their dependents from Beijing for, quote, consultations. Nonetheless, Lithuania refused to back down or change the name of the office. In response, China upped the pressure, both economically and diplomatically. China stopped approving export permits for Lithuanian producers and warned French and German firms that they wouldn't accept any imports with Lithuanian components. There were rumours that the People's Bank of China was banning commercial Chinese banks from lending credit for trade with any of the Baltic states. This essentially amounted to a de facto trade embargo and probably violates China's World Trade Organization obligations. In an apparent show of solidarity, Taiwan did its best to ease the pressure. On January the 5th, the Taiwan Tobacco and Liquor Corp bought 20,000 bottles of Lithuanian rum that had been bound for China. Then, a few days later on January the 9th, Taiwan announced a $200 million investment fund in Lithuanian trade with Taiwan, and just two days later on January the 11th, announced another $1 billion of investment in Lithuania, apparently to get Lithuania involved in semiconductor production. Taiwan's Minister for National Deployment, Hong Min Xin, said that Taiwan was open to investing even more money if the Chinese trade embargo continued. For those of you who don't know, Taiwan is a big player in the semiconductor industry. The Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company represents 54% of global market share, and if they decided to set up a new factory in Lithuania, it would be their first in Europe. Now, some sense of proportion is required here. 
TSMC's new factory in Arizona, for example, came in at about $12 billion, which means the $1.2 billion invested in Lithuania is just 10% of what a new factory would likely cost. But it's nonetheless interesting, because it shows how willing Taiwan is to stand up to China and that Taiwan's unique semiconductor industry has its own economic weight. Anyway, as well as implementing a de facto trade blockade, China also started engaging in its now infamous wolf warrior diplomacy. In November, China's foreign ministry spokesperson, Cao Lijian, accused Lithuania of anti-Semitism and children's rights abuses. While the state-run Global Times penned an editorial which described Lithuania as just a mouse or even a flea under the feet of a fighting elephant. In January, the Global Times described Lithuania as a country in crisis, a tool of the US to contain China, and blamed Taiwan separatists for the tension. So has China's pressure worked? Well, it's a mixed bag. The majority of Lithuanians apparently don't support the policy. A poll from November found that 34% of Lithuanians support the policy, while 41% oppose it, while a more recent poll commissioned by the government in January found that 13% of Lithuanians support the policy, with 58% opposed. The Lithuanian president admitted in January that the policy was a quote, mistake, and other Baltic states have sided with China. Estonia, for example, held a video call with China's foreign minister Wang Yi on Tuesday, where they explicitly committed to the One China policy. On the other hand, though, China's particularly aggressive rhetoric and response has triggered an outpouring of solidarity among other Western countries. Secretary of State Antony Blinken criticised China's attempt to bully Lithuania, and US Trade Representative Catherine Tai spoke with EU Trade Commissioner Valdis Dombrowskis to express America's full support in Vilnius. Macron said the targeted actions against Lithuania continue to worry us, which is about the most you can expect, and Germany's Parliamentary State Secretary for Economic Affairs, Franziska Bratner, said that Europe needed to send a signal to the Chinese government, our internal market is sacred. On Tuesday, Slovenian Prime Minister Janez Jansha went one further, describing China's response to Lithuania's misnaming of a representative office as terrifying and ridiculous, and referred to Taiwan as a democratic country. And a group of MEPs released a letter resolutely condemning political and economic coercion of the People's Republic of China's against Lithuania. Now, obviously, it's too early to say, but at the moment, it looks like China's somewhat excessive response might have backfired. The policy probably wouldn't have lasted anyway. It was, after all, unpopular with both the Lithuanian public and Lithuania's Baltic neighbours. But China's massive overreaction has turned it into a test of Western resolve. And, well, it was an overreaction. Fundamentally, Lithuania just misnamed a representative office. They didn't even really violate the One China principle, or at least they didn't intend to. In response, China launched a massive illegal trade embargo and accused Lithuania of being an anti-Semitic flea of a country. If the policy was reversed now, it would make it look like China can go around the world starting illegal trade wars and insulting anyone who even slightly offends them, and the West will just stand idly by. This isn't to say the West will necessarily do anything, it's perfectly possible that it'll just end up standing idly by, but it's at least significantly increased the chances that they respond, and that Lithuania, therefore, continues with the policy. We've talked about this on our TLDR Global channel before, how China's wolf warrior diplomacy can sometimes backfire, in part because it's apparently primarily intended for a domestic audience, and this seems to be another instance of it. So, what do you think? What should Lithuania and the EU do? Has China's belligerence backfired? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Remember, you can also join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram where we post even more often than we do on YouTube. Check out our pages for regular updates and clear explainer graphics so you can stay informed while you scroll. Thanks for your support. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers for making videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description below.